<sighs> Hello guys, it is your boy Shivante and we are back with another YouTube video and today guys um Unfortunately guys, I can't do face cam on my new phone. So I did do this on my old phone So today guys, we're gonna be doing some spooky scary Sunday today I just really wanted to do my face cam again, so I had to come on this phone and Today guys, we're gonna be reacting to I am and scary tales. We're just gonna be reacting to them until they run out of videos like until we run out of videos and then we're gonna have to react to another channel and then another one and, and it just keeps going on but anyways we are just gonna get right into the video we're, we're gonna be reacting to is three dark web horror stories animated so there you know I um, got my headphones ready so let's see what is popping today here we go Bro, why is my hat looking like that? Hold up. Bro, my hat is literally like... I can't even put my headphones like on there. Oh my gosh. Alright, there we go. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Oh, I forgot to turn the volume. Hold up. Oh my gosh. VPN is a virtual private network, which allows you to browse the internet without trace. Did you know that it's possible for hackers and cyber criminals to track what you do online? You could be buying something from your favorite site one minute, and the next, someone could get a hold of your credit card information. You need anonymity and concealment when browsing the web by using NordVPN. It allows you to connect to a virtual IP address anywhere in the world. It encrypts your personal online data, protecting you from unwanted spying by your internet service provider or hackers attempting to breach your devices, preventing the likelihood of malware and phishing attempts. And the awesome thing is, you can connect up to six devices or more on a single account. Another awesome feature of NordVPN is that you can see content that is not available in your area. Have you ever tried searching for your favorite show on Netflix, but for some reason, it does not pop up in the search results? That may be because right, of your location. Skip this. If you were not happy with okay. it, go to nordvpn.com okay. forward slash yep. IMR and you your extra subscription can be quite disturbing for many viewers. Okay, I myself, do your that. subscription, which will be automatically added on top of the plan you bought. Check out the description box for more. Alright, first story. This true incident of my life can be quite disturbing for many viewers. I myself am also ransacked by the impact of this incident mm. that I can barely sleep at night. Oh. I would like to keep my identity hidden, so for the sake of the story, you can call me Ted. Mm. Since childhood... I was different than other kids of my age. I still remember the first time I witnessed death. I was playing in our backyard when a pigeon broke its neck and fell in front of my monster truck. Dang. I don't know why a thrilling sensation grabbed me that day. Instead of calling for help, I crushed the suffering pigeon Are with my truck. Are you serious? The pigeon flocked its wings and blood kept flowing from its wow. smashed head. As I grew up, this feeling of seeing blood flow grew too. I sometimes used to bite my own lips just to taste some drops of blood. Oh I won't God. deny, I like the salty flavor of it even more than any dessert. Ew. When I was 12 years old, my mother went to visit my grandmother, and I was home alone. Our neighbor next door came to cook some food for me. Miss Harrison made me some steaks that night. While chopping the meat, she accidentally cut her finger with our sharp kitchen knife. She went to the washroom to dress her wound and told me to wash the knife as it had drops of her blood. As soon as yeah, she disappeared from sight, I secretly licked the knife oh and tasted her blood. God. I won't lie, it felt amazing. Soon, I came to realize that I possess a very weird fantasy which, in other terms, can be compared to cannibalism. No matter how many types of meat I had my entire life, nothing beats the taste of human blood and flesh. Mm. With more days passing by, my Some weird theory. fantasy started to make me anxious. I was looking for a way to make it come true by tasting actual human flesh. Oh. You must understand that I'm not a killer. My intention was never to hurt anyone on purpose. But I couldn't help I'm myself with this steps, hidden fantasy either. I was going through a troubled time then. My father died from a heart attack and our family fell apart. Hmm. He was admitted to the hospital for a long time. On the day of his death, when my mom and grandparents were busy talking to the doctors and paying the medical bills... I sneaked into the hospital more. I saw a fresh dead 
What even is a hooter? Are you serious right now? You're about to eat Why don't you show a us? human being? Bro, there's Dead no bodies way. lying there. Dude, it was probably lunchtime, so there was no stuff there. I was completely aware of the security camera, so I chose a dead body laying in the corner of the morgue. I carefully got close to it without revealing my face to the camera. I used a small surgical knife that I stole from my high school lab. I cut a few pieces of flesh from the body Ew. and ate it. Oh my God. Even though the flesh was a bit stiff, it tasted like heaven. I finally realized that is disgusting. I am a cannibal. I finished high school and decided to study medical science so that I can remain close to dead bodies. My first year of college went by tasting dead people's meat. I used to cut out selective body parts from the cadavers kept in the lab of our medical school, then have them as my dinner. Oh my Things weren't great, but I was addicted to it. One day, I was sitting in my room and browsing through the dark web when I came across a site named Cannibal Cafe Forum. This cannibalistic forum is about eating people and being eaten by people. Here, people log in request to get eaten or eat others. Talk about their cannibalistic fantasies. For example, a note under the website read, The Cannibal Cafe Forum is dedicated to covering a full range of cannibalistic fantasy. The topics here deal with fantasies involving consenting adults. The more I searched that site, the more my curiosity increased. Some people willingly wanted to be victims of cannibalism. I was shocked and extremely excited to find out about this site. I logged on and started to take part in chats on that forum. I had no friends, no girlfriend, and I hardly visited my family after moving out for college. Dang. I wanted to keep my life as private as possible to avoid any source of suspicion from anyone. Every day after coming back from college, my routine was to sit in front of my computer and explore the Cannibal Cafe forum. People posted ads on that forum, expressing their desire to get eaten and tasted by others. For me, it was like my own custom shopping site. I thought everything through and decided to post an ad myself. As I said already, I am not a killer, so all I wanted was a volunteer to make my fantasy come true. People used to talk about tasting human flesh, how to cut a human body in perfect pieces, what kind of recipes should be followed for a certain part of a body, and so on. I posted an ad that read, Looking for a volunteering victim to assist for a few of my recipes. Interested candidates, mail me. Every night after coming home, I check the page to see if someone has responded to my ad or not. A few weeks passed, and nothing happened. I almost lost interest in this form. I started to doubt the entire setup as a scam. A part of my mind kept telling me, none of this is actually real people. People who are claiming to be cannibals just like me are not at all criminals in real life. This is probably a hoax just to spook people about the dark web. I was on the verge of deleting my account and move on with my terrible secret when a reply popped up on my ad. It was a rainy Saturday night. I rented an apartment for myself. I used to work at a medical store on an internship basis to earn some cash. I had no social life as such, so my expenses were quite minimum in comparison to other college-going boys and girls. I came home completely drenched that night. I stormed into my room and opened my computer like every other day. I logged into the page and went to freshen up. While I took a shower in my bathroom, I kept hearing the sound of notifications coming from my computer. Within five to seven minutes, I came back to my seat and saw two notifications. The first notification was a comment on my ad. I opened it up and saw a reply reading, Hi, I am a 42-year-old woman. I would like to connect with you further. Please accept my chat request. The next notification was a request sent from a profile named Bloody Zoe. Nah. I knew this wasn't nah. her actual name, but anyways, I accepted her request. Irrespective of her age, I was eager to talk to her because I wasn't looking for anything more than tasting actual flesh from a volunteering victim. What? As we started to chat, I kind of started to feel fascinated by her words. Zoe said that she too has a weird sensation towards the entire act of cannibalism. She was looking for an opportunity to be a part of this actual act. And that's when she found my ad. I asked her, many people have posted ads before me, so what made her interested in mine? To which she replied that she is new to the page and her fantasies are different from others. She wants me to cut her layers of skin slowly and taste her blood, but she doesn't want any gruesome violence or torture during the process. I knew then and there 
that she will be a perfect match. Oh I told her that it will be great if she could meet me so we can take the matter forward. She says she will eventually, but before that, she will prefer if we talk for a few days to know each other well. I had no issues with that. We started to chat regularly on the forum. I even posted some of my recipes with the body parts of the cadavers I collected to fulfill my fantasy. With more days passing, Zoe and I became quite close, but we never shared any details regarding our personal life. Mm. We made a pact that after we are done tasting each other's blood one time, we will break all ties and move on to other possible candidates. So, after a wait of two months, the day finally arrived. We decided to meet at a completely unknown location. I didn't tell her my address, and she too did the same. Mm. We selected a random cafe to meet around 7 p.m. sharp. I hadn't seen her, neither had she seen me. It was going to be a weirdly fascinating experience for both of us. To resolve the issue of identification, I texted her. How will you recognize me? Zoe replied, I will tie a red scarf around my hand, and you also do the same. On my way home from college, I bought a red scarf from the clothing store. I barely slept that night. I was all excited to meet this woman and make my fantasy come true. The cafe was at 20 minutes distance from my place. I got ready and took my car keys. I dropped a text on the <laughs> chat box of Cannibal Cafe to notify Zoe that I am on my way. Zoe too replied back that she will get there in time, just how we discussed. I drove really fast that night and reached the cafe before time. I looked at the clock. It was 6.50 p.m. There were still 10 minutes left. I booked a table for the two of us and started to wait. I got up in the middle to go to the washroom. I took the scarf with me. While coming out of the washroom, I started to tie the scarf on my hand. Suddenly, my eyes went to the entrance. I saw a woman with a red scarf tied around her hand closing the cafe door after coming inside. Her back was facing me. I was sure that this is Zoe, with no doubt because there was no one else with a red scarf on their hand inside the cafe. I looked at my watch and it was 7 p.m. sharp. I was about to walk towards her when she finally turned towards me and my life shattered at that very moment. I was right about her name not being Zoe because I know her name and not just her name, I know her very well. The woman with whom I fantasized about fulfilling my cannibalistic urges on the dark web is none other than my very own mother. What? My mom was standing at the cafe door. Oh, her eyes were transfixed God. on me. We were both standing like statues with red scarves tied to our hands. I couldn't believe all the things she told me these past two months. Oh, my, my mom, goodness. she is just like me, or I am just like her. My head was banging. I had no clue what to do. My mom stood there numb, expressionless for a few seconds, then stormed out of the cafe like lightning. It has been four years now. I haven't seen her. I haven't talked to her. My grandparents have no idea about this, I think. I don't even know where my mom is now. Last time, when Nana called me, she said mom took a job in the UK and left this country. She asked me what went wrong with her suddenly. I obviously couldn't answer. I don't know what to do. I have deleted my account from the Cannibal Cafe forum. I haven't visited the dark web since the incident. I am trying to be a vegan now, but seriously. For real? For real. Your own mother and your own son. What the hell? What did I just encounter? What is your mother even doing on this website? What is she even doing on there? That's the question I have, like, I understand you're a cannibal, and you're on this website, but I don't understand why she's on this website, like, what? Maybe that's where he gets his, like, I don't know, condition or whatever, maybe that's where he gets his condition from or something, maybe, maybe he gets it from his mom, I don't know, I really, really don't know. Alright, we're gonna do one more. I'm not about to do three. So we're gonna only do 
one more and then we're just gonna get out of here all right so here we go will i be able to face my own mother ever in life no and not even yeah you would never before i begin this story ever i again. want to warn everyone I'm to sorry, stay man. away from William. dark web last month i had a small gathering at my place I invited a couple of my office colleagues, and we all drank and watched the football match. It was a men's night out, hence everyone got really drunk and lost track of time. <laughs> there were three of us, on his me and my two colleagues, Max and Andy. We work in the IT department of a multinational company. The night was going well, but suddenly, Max brought up the topic of dark web. He said in a serious tone, Very few people have the actual guts to surf the dark web. If you lost your way there... You have no idea what horrible things will come up. In my college days, I also accessed dark web once or twice. But nothing horrible took place. I said in a mocking tone, Well, I think people spread a lot of rumors about the dark web. It's not that dangerous at all. Andy said, Um, I never want to step in that arena. One of my college seniors told me that a guy ordered drugs from the dark web once. But instead, someone sent him the dust of human bones, which he snorted. I said in a oh surprised voice, What? What happened to him? Andy replied while taking a sip from his beer bottle. That guy barely got out alive. My senior told me he bled terribly from his nose. I laughed and said, I think your senior lied, dude. I can show you dark web is not that scary at all. I got up and turned on my laptop. Max and Andy sat beside me on the couch, and we started to surf the dark web using the Tor browser. I was drunk and got adamant. I still regret going to the dark web just to prove a stupid point that night. I was going through the hidden wiki of the dark web. There were a bunch of links to various sites. We found a site that helps you to hire a hitman, and then a site where you can upload torture videos and earn money from the viewership. The more I searched, the weirder everything started to become. Max said, Dude, can't believe some people can be this creepy in real life. I was about to click a new page when Andy pulled my attention to a link. The link read, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash true footages dot onion. I said, let's check out this link. Max grabbed my hand and said, I don't think we should click on random links, Matthew. Exactly. Let's just get out of this and watch the game. Thank Seems you. like you are not one of those people who have the guts to surf the dark web, huh? I later realized how I insulted him, but I know I should have listened to Max that night. It's Without saying even, anything oh, more, I clicked on the link. The screen started to load. Andy and Max kept staring at the screen with big wide eyes. I thought it would be some kiddish jump scare or something similar to that. But as the page finished loading, a zip file started to download on my laptop. Andy said, Hey, it can be some virus, you know. It can crash your machine. I replied, saying, I have a strongly built antivirus, and the system would have blocked the download if it was a virus in the first place. Anyways, after the file downloaded, I extracted it in my laptop, and it came across with three MP4 files in it. I finished my beer in one sip and said, Are you ready to watch some dark web footages? No. It smirked. No. Max and Andy were curious, too, so they nodded. As I played the first footage, a small wooden house appeared on the screen. The house was located in the countryside. The person who took the footage started to walk towards the house. As he opened the door, we saw... Done. ...an old furniture and damp clothes lying here and there. It was evident from the condition of the house that no one lives there. We could hear the heavy breathing of the person who had the camera in his hand, but... It was hard to guess whether it's a man or a woman. The person stopped near the stairs, standing in the living room. I was obviously getting bored, but suddenly, Andy said in a whispering tone, Did you hear that sound? I asked, What sound? He said, Listen carefully. I think someone's crying. I immediately increased the volume and realized, Andy is right. There was actually the sound of a man sobbing. The man was crying like he's in terrible pain. The camera started to go upstairs. Now, our heartbeats got faster. As the person with the camera reached upstairs, the video ended. Without any hesitation, I played the second video. The second video started showing a corridor lying ahead of the camera. This time, the cry could be heard more clearly. 
The camera kept moving towards the corridor, and it came near the door. Max said, I think there's someone inside the room. Andy Shistum said, Watch it quietly. Now, the person behind the camera went to open the doorknob, and we saw a pale-looking skinny hand with lots of rings on its fingers. The red nail polish on those fingers made the hand look even creepier. We realized it's a woman, probably in her late 40s, filming this video. As she twisted the doorknob and opened the door, oh. a vicious sight took place. There was an old man oh tied up to a chair gosh. placed in the middle of the room. It was this man's who cry we Dang, heard on the he first looks footage. Skinny. It looks like Seeing he has the woman a with the camera, months. the man started to cry even louder. Weeks, probably. The fearful look on his face made it all look so real. <laughs> the man said in a sobbing and gasping voice, Please, Julia, let me go. Why are you doing this to me? Please. Don't hurt me. Let me go, Julia. We heard the woman laughing in a very disturbing way. It was evident from her laughter that she was enjoying this man's pain. Mm. She placed the camera on a wooden stand or something like that. Now the camera is still, and it is focusing on the man tied up to the wooden chair. Andy said in a panicked voice, Is this all real? This time, I got really confused. I wasn't expecting something like this at all. The man kept sobbing, and there was no sign of that woman for a few moments. Suddenly, oh the my woman gosh. jumped in front of the camera from the left corner. It almost get <sighs> Why? Why? Why do you gotta... Why? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to pop up in front of the camera like that? You ugly! You ugly. Nah, cut the video, bro. I'm done. I don't cut the video. She started to laugh, looking at the camera like a maniac. Oh, my God. Her eyes were big, and she had a pale face. The way she stared at the camera, it gave us all goosebumps. Max even said, I feel like she can see me. What the hell is this all? The woman slowly moved her head and looked at the man. Then, she again looked back at the camera and gestured her finger in her lips. Andy said, this woman is freaking insane. Is she telling us to keep quiet? What kind of bizarre video is this? I was speechless with everything that was happening in front of my eyes. The woman picked up something from the ground. We couldn't see what it was, but as soon as she started to walk towards the Don't man, the shady. man's behavior changed in Don't a second. Tell me super shady. The man Please. started to panic Please. like a fish out of water. He said, Please no, Julia, no, you no. can't do this to me. No. I am your husband. Julia, please, don't do this. The woman reached behind his back and lifted her hand. Oh, she that's worse. The her hand. Not a her evil smile made my heart drop to my oh stomach. My gosh, she dead. again looked at the camera and shifted like before. <laughs> the man was crying and sobbing, no, and the video dead, ended there. Rest the three of us sat silently on the couch, looking at the laptop screen oh, flashing the third video file. I was literally shivering. Max was breathing heavily. Andy said in a trembling voice, Should we watch the last video? What do you think happens in that? Max got up and said, Damn you, Matthew. I told you to stop. I hit my face with my palm. My forehead was covered with sweat. Then I said, I, I don't know. Andy played the last video. What we saw next shook us for our entire lives. The man was no more on that chair. The wall behind him was painted in blood. There was blood splattered all over the room. Our eyes were stuck on the screen. Our hearts were beating like wild horses. When we saw that woman coming in front of the camera from the left side again, her head was down looking at the floor. Her hair covered her partial face. I could tell she was holding something in her hand. She then stopped and turned towards the camera. Her face was still looking down. She started to cry like a child. Her cry was making everything even more uncomfortable now. She cried, standing like that for a few more seconds, and then suddenly lifted her hand oh, with the bloody head of her my dead husband. God. Yes, she was holding the severed head of that man in the chair. She started to laugh like a maniac while showing off his head towards the camera. Her eyes were glowing. She was looking like the devil from hell. Max gasped. Oh my God! Did she really kill her husband with a chainsaw? And immediately started to throw up on the floor. Oh, God. I was numb. 
I couldn't move, couldn't take my eyes away. The woman then got really close to the camera and gestured her bloody finger onto her lips and said in a whispering voice, Shh, keep quiet. The video ended there. All of us remained awake the entire night. Andy got really sick. We admitted him to the hospital as he had a nervous breakdown after watching the video. We took the footage to the cops and told them everything. The cops are still investigating and looking for a woman named Julia who cut her husband's head off with a chainsaw and posted the entire incident on the dark web. If anyone comes across this woman, please let the cops know about it. I have no doubt that she is a mentally unstable woman roaming free with murderous intentions hidden inside. We're going to end it right there. Um, this was a 10 week. This this was a 10 week. Yo, that first one. Yo, that was like, honestly, like an 8. That second one brought it up to a 10. Like, bro, what the heck was that? Yo, that was crazy. Okay. So, what happened was, she was crying, and then she just pulled up his head and started... <laughs> what? Yo, I thought it was a machete she was about to bring out, but a chainsaw is way worse. Oh, my gosh. Alright, guys. We're gonna get out of here. Spooky Scary Sunday.